everything's nice and smooth. And right now what I have is some shellac based primer with a little bit of canary yellow, I think they call it. I want to just touch it down here on those spots where it seems like I can see mahogany wood through the paint. I'm just lightening up that crack a little bit and I mean I'm getting rid of that dark line without getting rid of that dark line first if I was just trying to take this exact same color yellow and put it there it would appear a shade darker than the paint itself that's why I'm using this primer to lighten up the dark line first as a base coat and then I'll go over the second time with a more yellow coat. Once I do that I'll be ready to shoot some clear lacquer. This here is like a smudging tool where I went overboard and I've got it dampened with some denatured alcohol. I can kind of take that sharp line off of the primer coat, the base coat. Blend it in with the surrounding. I can clean it off. I took a little amber lacquer, diluted it with some uncolored lacquer and a little canary yellow, and I got a teeny tiny little brush. I'm just going to go in here and give it a little painting. real actual brush strokes or anything just want to kind of drop it on so I don't wipe off that shellac based primer got the fan going because I'm working with lacquer indoors it's always a little stinky Today's the day, out in the garage. What I've got here is a uh, recipe number 30. It's kind of like a little bit of white lacquer with a bunch of yellow pigment. I put it in this little jar. I'm getting ready to hook it up to the uh, airbrush. If it's a little too yellow, I can add vintage amber to make it more orange-ish. I already knew that this looked a little too yellow and I wanted to make it more orangish so I put a drop of the amber and then I can always add more of this yellow too if I want to darken it but chances are I will darken it and that's okay Let's
gonna bring back that black line here for uh, doing the clear coat. Got to get that yellow overspray off this black edge. I just use an X-Acto blade and my thumbnail. I see a little spot right there that's going to need a little drop filling of some clear. Okay, the color coats came out great. It's the next day. Um, I put this piece of tape here because I didn't want any yellow getting on the nut or the binding. So since today I'm spraying clear coat, I could peel that piece off. I gotta leave all this tape on. I don't want to put clear coat down on places that I don't need it. So I'm using Prevail sprayers for the clear coat. I've got a lacquer that is 40% thinner, 60% lacquer, right out of the can. And then the flash coat is more like 50% lacquer retarder, maybe 40% lacquer thinner, and 10% lacquer. It's water thin, but it helps. I spray it on right after the lacquer coat. It helps the orange peel. It minimizes the orange peel, which lets me sand off less wet when I'm in the wet sanding mode after it cures. Let me load up these uh, cans and start spraying. Okay, I've, uh, I've tested both sprayers. The first one that I tried, was nothing was coming out, so you got to test these things ahead of time. I spray it right into the box fan in the window. Because the ones that aren't working real good, you could splatter stuff all over the place. Um, other really important thing right now is that this color coat came out so good, I don't want to do any sanding to it because I would destroy that color. i got to spray right over top of that to protect that. So no sanding at this point. Other important thing, to wear a respirator at all times, and that this very first coat, it's going to go down so light. Um, it's just going to be powdery. It's not going to have any wetness to it. I don't want it to look wet. Because when you, your very first clear coat after a color coat, the color could sag a little bit. And if, if you build it up too fast, it'll, it'll uh, reactivate the color and uh, start dripping down. And then you got to start over. So this first coat is just going to be really light. Just watch how light this is going to be. I'm going to put on my respirator. And then after that, I'm going to show you how I clean off the nozzles in between coats. Oh, the one other thing I was going to mention is the uh, relative humidity. Uh, you want to check that right now. I've got 73 degrees in the garage and 51% humidity. That's perfect. If the humidity gets over 60, 65 uh, percent, there could be a problem. And that problem usually ends up being the lacquer looks cloudy and they call that blushing. The other thing that can happen right now is, and it actually seemed to happen in my first color coats was fisheye, but I'm not going to get into that right now. I'm just going to spray a light coat. Perfect humidity. Temperature is great. So that lacquer thing. That is cool.
Here's an important tip, man. If you spray a coat and you think for a second, man, that went on too heavy, it might start dripping, grab the guitar and hold it in the direction where the heaviest part of the lacquer is horizontal. Uh, you can prevent it from dripping. Say I went down this side and it was a nice coat, perfect. Went down the middle, good. And then I went this side and I was like, oh my god, that's way too much. Grab the guitar, hold it like that for about 20 seconds so that the uh, lacquer doesn't start to drip. Another good way to prevent dripping is to hold it upside down like this. For some reason, and I know when they spray at the factory, they spray the guitars upside down, the lacquer, if it does start to drip, it ends up kind of heavy right here in these two corners, which is absolutely perfect, really. A little bit extra lacquer on those corners is great, because I'll tell you the first place I always sand through is right there on those two corners. So if it tends to drip down into these corners and stop right there. At Harpeth Guitar Restoration, our main purpose is to make guitars happy. And this one here, I do believe, is a happy one. We'll get a close-up on some of this stuff. Um, I went ahead and wet sanded it. I think I waited three weeks to let that nitro gas off. And I wet sanded with uh, one no 800 grit through... 5,000, um, actually 7,000 grit. I didn't have any 5,000 grit um, in the water, so I skipped 5,000. And I went straight from the 3,000 Trizac pad to um, 7,000. And then I did the two compounds. Right here you can see a blemish. This is where some of the amber color kind of pooled up. For some reason unknown no big deal for most people there's also a little bit of a thirsty spot I call these little thirsty spots where um, there's like a little divot a little hole where the lacquer didn't quite fill completely so it left a little uh, visure of sorts a little a little deal most people are not concerned about that kind of thing. Although, I have had customers come in and pay $40 to have something like that filled in and polished. But most people will be delighted with the work on this one. Uh, I sure am. I'm going to go ahead and put the tuners and the strings back on see what it sounds like. I haven't even played this one. 